Hello there, welcome to another episode of World of Tanks with Gany Titan, and we're in Tapeville Ridge in counter mode, and I'm in the T49, the US Tier 9 uh, light tank. So, this is the second out of the uh, recent grind effort that I've been making at Tier 9 to elite a tank. So, I've already elite the Object 257. Now, the Object 257 I found to be a very solid performer in that you didn't get spectacularly good results, but you didn't often get spectacularly bad results either. It kind of steady solid performer of a tank um, you generally would if you were careful do your hit points and damage or something pretty close to it and okay I had you know the wipeout matches and matches where I got death start or artillery quite early on or just got overwhelmed but um, and not too many matches where I got um, high, what do you call it, high calibers or um, not so much high calibers but mastery badges uh, but I think the standard is probably quite high at the moment Given that it's a new tank and there's probably a lot of people who are much better at it than I am playing this tank uh, But what I have noticed since I started resuming the tier 9 grind there in the end of October Was that the light tank uh, performance changed quite a bit in that um, With the exception of the period there where uh, I can't remember one of the High tiered light uh, mercenary tanks was contract was after it was new and every match had four or five light tanks. In which case, you were better off the T49 playing the derp version. But even in those circumstances, the light tanks are being played like a mob of heavy uh, medium tanks. It's a bit a while, um, certainly six months or more since you could go out in a light tank, unless it was always different at high tiers. I don't know. This has been my first real experience at high tier light tanking. But the um, going out and getting a lot of assisted damage just seems to be a thing of the past. And I suspect part of that is that there are a lot of games now where you don't get too many tank destroyers either. And uh, that possibly is part of it that people are playing predominantly heavy tanks. Uh, I've been in a lot more games recently that are just wall to wall heavy tanks than artillery. With the odd light medium tank thrown in for the aficionados um, and you don't get too much in the way of assisted or spotting damage. Now I've been up in the hill long enough and I think I keep getting spotted by that uh, light tank in the cap circle um, so, and nobody's dealing with him, well somebody just shot him but nobody's dealing with him effectively so I thought I would uh, come over here and offer my services so to speak get into a position to shoot him and we've got rid of him and that's him out of the way so, I don't know, trying to go to res resume my scouting activities for my team. Now, there's two, a light tank and a heavy tank have made it down to the hill there that I was on, um, which is a pretty strong position to be as long as. We get three heavy tanks down there at one stage, you thought that I've been able to beat them uh, or stop them from getting down there in the first place, but they weren't. So, I thought the Conqueror was probably vulnerable to a drive by, but the light is a one shot kill. And that if the other tank came out and joined me, uh, we would be able to deal with the uh, Conqueror pretty easily. However, the heavy tank has shown no sign of budging. Our Conqueror is it? Karen Arvin. It is the light tank that's come out and joined me. And um, he spent too much time in front of the gun of the Conqueror. But he has persuaded the Conqueror to move around into more sheltered territory. And therefore, he's going to turn around up the back of the hill at the moment where um, it'll be one on one with the, heavy, the allied heavy tank and the AMX 30 is going to join them so now it's two to one against the allied heavy tank on the hill so I'm going to have to intervene here for a moment before that heavy tank gets overwhelmed by the pair of them so around the hill we go we've actually managed to become unspotted so it's probably just heavy tanks that were shooting me up there um, and the Conqueror, as I suspected, was now facing the wrong way, so we put a round of the engine, set him on fire, and he's burnt down. But my buddy has not survived the attention of the MX-30, which just tracked me. We get the repair up and running, we start putting rounds into him and circling around. Now he's more hit points than I do, but fortunately artillery joins in the fray, at least artillery is aware of the threat that he represents. Now one more, one more shot after this I think should do it, so let's have a look. Yeah, just need to get the angle. He makes it a bit easier by actually coming after me so that I don't have to be quite up into the road. 
and we got rid of him. Now it looks like we're a tank down, or at least we've killed one less tank than the enemy, but if you actually count, the enemy are two tanks up. Because um, one of our tanks seems to manage to kill itself, which is, I suppose, not that difficult on this particular map. Um, a lot of places along the river edges that are quite steep. And if you weren't paying attention in a light or medium tank and they were shooting behind you or something like that, driving off a cliff and uh, dying is not possible on this map at all. However, we are effectively a gun down by that tank in the wrong side of the cap circle. Um, he didn't better off supporting one of the other tanks. Don't know, I mean, probably better off over on the western side of the map because... Um, an even fight is never a good fight in, in this game, and two even fights wouldn't be an improvement, whereas one uneven fight, at least, and one even, in our favour, would be better off, because the um, the other one would be a fight in the central position, and then we could get crossfire. And crossfire is always the most dangerous thing to be, the most dangerous thing to be under in uh, this game. Now I'm actually making a run on the artillery, uh, I thought the gap was open and that I'd be a chance that I could actually snaffle the artillery on its own. Particularly while the enemy tanks were engaged there, both in the south and in the uh, centre. Or the west and in the centre. Uh, unfortunately the western side seems to have um, collapsed, I didn't really notice at this stage. Don't know if it would have affected my decision to carry on, I'd still probably have made it after the... Um, heavy tank but I might not have kept driving if I'd spotted that the western side fight had collapsed now there was a I'm attacked here by a sort of wagon and I didn't go after him because well I have very few hit points left and he's got support in the form of another heavy tank behind him so it's time to run away and we're back down to even with tanks which is not good um, because the enemy now have the positional advantage of us they're the ones with tanks in the flank and putting our guys in the centre in a crossfire and the two tanks are joining together. The one of them's trying to cap out and hiding in the bottom of the cap circle and the other is being aggressively pushing forward. Which isn't going to work. If you'd both fallen back to the cap circle, I don't know if there'd be a chance, but a good chance the enemy would expose themselves to reset the caps. And at least we give artillery an easier target to shoot at. So what do I do now? Um, there's only three of us left and one of them is the cap circle and is refusing to budge. Now if I can keep the guys in the cap circle lit to give artillery a chance, um, that would be very helpful. I don't think I can save your man. There's no real good spot from where I am that's overlooking the um, cap circle that I could get shots into, and preferably get shots into and remain. Uh, in cover. I need to get down to this end of the map and well they've now dealt with the guy in the um, cap circle. I come up and they're staying low they're no longer visible but they looks like to me they're heading for the likely location of our artillery which of course wouldn't be far away from where the artillery spawns down there in the uh, southeastern corner of the map. In hindsight, I probably should have gone around the other side of the mountain instead of taking the chance of coming up here. I was hoping I could get up here unspotted so that I could shoot at them crossing the open ground. But now that I've come up here, I have been spotted and I've attracted the attention of one of the enemy tanks. So I've managed to lose him and hopefully he thinks I'm coming off this side. And I come around here so he's not looking at me and that's good. He snaps one off. He's stuck in place there, he's slowed down enough that I'm able to get a decent shot in, finish him off. Now, this is where I think I make another mistake here. I'm coming into the slope too fast in order to stop, so, um, but I thought I could get away with coming along here to lose the spot and then turning around. But I don't manage it. Um, I'm under fire or under uh, observation for longer than I intended, and by coming up here, I come back under observation again. Probably from another tank. And I'm under pursuit. So the that's the Centurion uh, 7 1. He is pursuing me heavily. And uh, I don't know if I'd make it around the corner, but I don't. So um, VK 4503 gets me. So having done nearly 3k damage and 2k assistance damage, what does one have to do to win a fight around here? 
the artillery isn't going to do it in his own um, because he's just too close to the original spawn point and if he was any chance I think he should have headed down into the low ground where it's more restricted he's heading up at the high ground where everyone can get a view of him and I don't know what the 212A is in terms of performance but I presume it's got a really long reload 30 seconds or more like a lot of these high tier um, tanks so um, he'll get one shot off and that'll be it if he was located in an unusual part of the map where they wouldn't know to find him he'd be much more likely to get to meet tanks one at a time and have at least uh, a fighting chance not that it's great anyway in artillery once he gets into uh, real knife fighting territory there goes the artillery and it's game over the enemy win with three tanks to spare so how did all that uh, work out in terms of uh, performance well we had what does we say we made money um, got a lot of experience but that's a um, an artifact of the uh, what do you call it the on track 2828 damage 1917 assisted damage first class mastery top of experience table and a um, top gun as well we shooting wasn't great however um it didn't win us the match so i asked earlier what does it take to win a match well tune in to the next episode of world of tanks um and i'll tell you with the t49 thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give it a like and a share if you've not already done so please subscribe to the channel i'll catch you all again soon bye for now